Yeah, so this is, this is it. This is where it happens. And this was your garage before it was a studio. It was a garage. Brian Cranston walked in, he's like, so this is it, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, John Hamm was in here. He's like, oh yeah, Hamm was in here? You know, like that made, that, that sort of gave him some, uh, some credibility. One year ago, we introduced you to comedian Mark Maron, who has interviewed many of the world's biggest celebrities for his popular WTF podcast, all done from a makeshift studio in his garage. But his 613th episode topped all the previous ones. Maron hosted President Obama for a candid one-hour conversation. That show was posted online on Monday and had more than 900,000 downloads in just the first 36 hours. So from his garage with the president to Studio 57, we are so pleased to welcome him. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning. Nice to be here. How'd you get him? How did you get him in the garage? I, it, it was, uh, it was a complete, it's amazing. About a year ago, the White House reached out to my producer, Brendan McDonald, and said, look, you know, we like the show. We might be interested in doing something. It was vague. And Brendan told me that the White House called him. Like, yeah, right. The White House called. All right. <laughs> and then, the, you know, the relationship sort of grew over time. And we, you know, Brendan would reach out and then they'd reach out to us. And at some point they said, well, we're, we want the president to do the show. So I said, you know, Brendan, I said, all right, where do I got to fly? Do I got to go to the White House? What are we going to do? Right. Do I got to go to a hotel? And, the, and he said, no, they want to do the garage. And I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> they, the, he's going to come to my house? And like, I, my bathroom door doesn't even work. You know, like, so I'm nervous about weird things, but it's not that easy an undertaking once the day. They kind of changed your whole garage around, didn't they? Well, they didn't change your garage around. They made me pick up some clutter. It's very clean now. Good thing about, you know, the president visiting or a divorce, everything gets organized. <laughs> but, uh, but they wanted to, they needed to tent the driveway and they needed to put snipers. They, you know, Secret Service came and they're like, we need to find where we're going to put the snipers. And I'm like, oh, that's a good question. Did you I've have never... to ask your neighbors about this? Sure I did. They did. Uh, you know, Dennis, my neighbor, was, he, I thought that we were putting people out, but they're like, you kidding? This is the best thing that's ever had. <laughs> he's retired, and he's got the Secret Service saying, can we put snipers on your roof? <laughs> biggest day of his life. And they gave him a patch. And he's like, look at my patch, you know. <laughs> so they got to tent the driveway so yeah. there's no oh, sight wow. lines. Right. So I don't know if you have pictures. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I think I took that one. And then, yeah, so that's the back part. Once you get through the gate, they didn't have to tent that all away because the snipers are right up on, to the left of that picture. Wow. And they told me to stand in front of the garage at the end of this when the time came. It was funny because he, he took a, uh, a motorcade from Santa Monica or from Beverly Hills to Santa Monica then flew the chopper to the Rosewell parking lot. And that's like 10 minutes from my house. Right. So we saw him fly over, like my house. Wow. And I'm like, okay, he's close. I, I, that's him in the air. And then when he came, you know, I, it, I had a five minute warning and I stood at the end of my driveway and I saw part of the motorcade go by and then just a bunch of people coming up that tunnel and I couldn't see him. And then he comes through that gate and he's like, Mark. And I'm like, ah, Mr. <laughs> President, you know. But you know, once you got over those nerves, because I felt like in your podcast, yeah. there was a certain candidness that we're seeing more and more with mm -hmm. the president. Mm -hmm. What was your goal in speaking to him? Because it, it certainly didn't feel like how we've seen him before. Well, it was interesting because I, I wanted to do not necessarily a lighthearted interview, but I like my podcast is really about talking candidly one on one about whatever someone wants to talk about, but I'd like it to be an authentic conversation and have some connection so you can feel the person, you know, as a person. And I didn't know if I would be able to do that with the president, but it was, it was interesting because right when he got there, he, 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 was, he was very disarming and, and put me at ease. Right. Like I was nervous and, and just by having him there, I'm like, oh, okay, I feel better. You're, you're a guy. You're a real guy. You got the most attention, Mark, for, for obviously for when, it, when he used the N-word. I, yeah. I know you haven't really been watching the coverage, but... You know, it, it, that, that, that caught a lot of people, and the, and the White House had a press conference after it because of it. Yeah, I did hear about that, heard about the press conference. I, I remain somewhat detached because I want to keep the experience in my mind and in my heart, you know, right. from, from what happened. So I haven't really watched much TV, but I know that happened, obviously, and I've talked to people about it. I think it's, as a comic, it wasn't that jarring to me, and I think more than, to, to frame it correctly, he said the N-word to talk about using the N-word yeah. and right. what that implicates, and I, I think that, it was a broader statement about racism, I think taking out of context and judging the president. And then some, some places were censoring the president. They would bleep right. him using the word. I'm like, he, he, he said it. You right. Know, just, right, right. But, well, uh, but it was, it, it, it was I think day. it was taken out of context. But yeah, it was an amazing day. It was uh, something that most people could never expect to happen in their life. No right. nerve seeing us after that experience. Congratulations, <laughs> Mark Maron, and thank you. You can catch Mark on tour doing stand-up this weekend in New York and New Jersey. And next weekend in Portland, you can see his full schedule at WTFPod.com.